So for the last part, I well, two things I wanted to do. Um, I do eventually want to open up. Uh, if there are questions from the audience, we'd love to field those. But I kind of want to do a little bit of a rapid fire round uh, with all of our panelists. And actually, Larissa, if we can start with you, that would be great because you mentioned a little bit about uh, using AI tools. And I wondered if you might be able to briefly share uh, maybe any lessons learned or uh, some brief experiences that you've had with using AI in, in some way, shape, or form in your classroom. We'd love to hear about that. Um, well, uh, I learned that it's really saving our time, especially if you need to simplify the text. Uh, it also can help you to uh, create um, some tables, uh, create some visuals that will accompany the lesson. Um, I use a lot uh, the function of a copilot. It's uh, a Microsoft um, AI uh, generated tool uh, where students can um, type uh, the description and then uh, they will see the picture like with this description. Um, it's very uh, game-like for them to do that, but they also see how well they can describe something. Like, is this what you want to actually um, see at the end as a product of it? Um, and then they have also like a pictures uh, matching with the descriptions too. So here's a picture and it's uh, uh, created by Copilot by me um, before that. And then say, okay, here's description and here's picture, where is it? And sometimes with like more advanced uh, proficiency, you can have like a little, little, um, different things, but they have to notice that in a description, in a text, it says it has to be na stalia, ne pat stalom, ne okolo stala, and so on. So um, kind of a great tool, um, and then I will never be able to draw a picture like that, or, you know, if not co-pilot, then I have to, I don't know, I have to draw it, or I have to uh, spend hours and hours finding it uh, online, but here's, I can use that. Um, and again, students can do it to have the relationship with this. Um, you can deconstruct the text uh, for different levels. Again, it well does not. It's not probably the authentic, but sometimes we have to do this for for the content and you know for the language proficiencies too. Um, so that's easier to do too, much easier than um, do it just without uh, AI help. But also have to be careful with this too. You have to be a good expertise in it because sometimes when I wanted a picture for to show students one particular thing, but it was completely not that. And it's not culturally sensitive too. <laughs> so um, yes, I have to really proofread it and look at the pictures and then show what is appropriate or not. So it's a good tool, but you cannot rely on it like 100% but um, you can use it and make your teaching fun uh, and interactive too. Um, that's what I wanted to say. And, uh, you know, with the presentations too, uh, again, if you want, if you have a very interesting content and you want to make sure all the proficiencies or understand what you're talking about, uh, AI can help you with this visual uh, representation of the main ideas too. Excellent. And definitely, I would echo the importance of really vetting anything that AI produces as it's often not quite ready right out of the gate, and it often requires some uh, modifications. I didn't have really have much artistic talent, so I, I would agree that it's a huge time saver, especially for generating those photos you might need. Thank you for that. Uh, and again, we'll kind of go a little bit rapid fire here. Uh, Shannon would love to hear your thoughts about maybe some lessons learned from using any AI tools you might have used in your own Russian classroom. Actually, the thing that comes to mind, I used in a literature and translation class, but I think it could be modified for a language class. I had students read a story by Stanislav Lem, which uh, is kind of uncannily predicting chat GPT. And then we sort of talked about the text and how it's similar. Um, how did he uh, predict this, uh, et cetera. And then I had students, um, it, it was from a collection called the Siberiad that had uh, basically fairy tales, but that were set uh, on various planets with with these these wizard constructors. And all of the 
stories within that collection had certain uh, features. And so I had students ask ChatGPT to write a new version of something that would fit into that collection of stories. And then they had to assess the output and then improve it. And so I think, like I said, I used this in a class where students were native speakers of English and we were using English, but I think it could be modified for a, a higher level, maybe a class in Russian where you ask them to sort of co-write something with ChatGPT could be interesting. I think one of the most important things for us right now is to make sure that they are being critical about what comes out, <laughs> right? So um, make sure they're not just taking it uh, without looking at it and thinking about it. I love the idea. That sounds like an incredibly fun assignment, but also one that might help our students to understand the importance of academic integrity and the need to vet content that comes out of ChatGPT. I love the idea. Thank you for that, Shannon. And then Evgeny, the same question kind of going a little bit rapid fire. Do you have any lessons learned or stories you want to share about using AI in your online Russian classroom? Or sure. I use a lot of uh, ChatGPT in my kind of a professional correspondence, uh, but very little in teaching. I find artificial intelligence to be um, not smart enough to a to send my students, first year students to practice even simple stuff because chat GPT will make stuff uh, stuff up and will inevitably kind of a uh, uh, being not helpful and not not um, not uh, correct often. So my extent of using ChatGPT in the classroom is okay. Create <laughs> sort of fill in the blanks sentences uh, on the topic of I don't know food and use the verbs of positioning and that's that's that what it does great uh, um, things like that. Uh, but I am still staying away from. Uh, having my students interact with G chat GPT on a kind of a full scale basis and have assignments uh, based on chat GPT. I, I know it's, you know, I'm, I'm probably not doing my students uh, a favor, but I think uh, we need to kind of wait until uh, this technology becomes uh, sort of a foolproof for our pedagogical purposes and for our novice and timid classroom before we start using it uh, more, more widely. I completely understand where you're coming from, from that. And in the online environment, as much as we love to be able to give students real-time feedback, that's got to be accurate. And as we talked about before, it's very important to vet the content that comes out of AI and if we are not there to do that for them, we don't want our students to learn things that aren't going to help them. So yeah, I it's definitely there, understand. But it's not there yet. It's not there yet. It, it, from, We're from not. Yeah. We're not there yet. I would agree with that. Definitely. Thank you. And then Olga, again, same question, kind of going a little bit rapid fire. Can you share with us maybe some lessons learned or experiences that you had using AI in your online Russian classroom? Mm -hmm. So we, as, as Eugenia, I was a little bit uh, hesitant to use ChatGPT, but at the same time, uh, I've been talking to my students a lot. I, I was asking about the experience and in our, I think, midterm evaluations, in one of the midterm evaluations back uh, in the fall, we found out the students actually want to be educated a little bit more. They're like, they also were not sure what to do with ChatGPT. Some of them, of course, went ahead and started to, you know, breaking all the codes of conduct <laughs> and plagiarizing. But many of them actually just said that we don't know what to do. We are afraid of touching it, a little bit hesitant. And I actually started introducing, like, first of all, the policies, including very clear policies about chat GPT in your course uh, descriptions, also on your uh, learning management system, your learning management system, everywhere where there was like independent component, we would remind the chat GPT and any uh, you know, artificial intelligence tools, they they are going to get students in trouble. Well, it's just to remind, because apparently some of them didn't realize it too. <laughs> so we cannot assume some basic things. But uh, what we did, like I did include, int introduce several activities where I use ChatGPT, especially image generation, uh, uh, generating um, uh, tools. And these were very beneficial. That was uh, amazing experiences, because I think that 
uh, they can AI tools can uh, enhance students' experiences create by if we create a um, specific list, text, images. We can ask them, and we that what we ask like to generate a list of like packing list for uh, to travel to Sochi, and these students will ask Chat GPT to create a list to travel in the in the uh, winter to Magadan, and then they will use the list. But then they will have to describe and co construct full sentences about what they need to pack what I want to take with me, right? Things like this. So it's kind of like a like outline, using this as outlines. And, uh, but at the same time we did, and I'm hoping to, uh, since Flip no longer is going to be available and we cannot use it with our learning management system, which I've been using a lot in my language classes for, for, for years. So I'm planning to experiment with the chat GPT as, as a speaking, as a speaking partner on the phone. So now we, I tested it is possible to do this. We've been working with students. My students were doing writing, interpersonal writing, interpersonal communication through writing, where they were corresponding writing with chat GPT, asking questions, following up uh, with follow-up questions. But I also want to, for them to, to use them as speaking partners, because now you can do this since May and it's free and we'll see where it will take us. But definitely we need to be careful we definitely need to educate our students about this and that's my that's the lessons that i have learned so far in my interaction with uh, ai tools so far much appreciated and yes it is really important as educators to lay that groundwork if you plan on bringing ai into the classroom making it really clear about what the expectations are and where the boundaries are in terms of keeping our academic integrity agreements intact Thank you all very much for this. Uh, what I would love to do now is uh, if anyone from our audience has any questions, if you would like to uh, turn your microphone on or type into the chat, uh, we've covered so many topics, but if anybody from our audience has anything to ask our panel, we would warmly uh, take those questions.